OK, last week on page 18. We missed one of the mistakes according to the textbook. So I went back to check the answer and it says that. This is a mistake. I simply want it fixed. Its explanation is that the previous sentence says, frankly, I do not care who's to blame for the broken watch band or Mr. Severs's medical problem. So there are actually two problems here. Now, usually we would think that we can only fix one of these problems. Like, Mr. Severs's medical problem is not something that we can fix. But in slang, the word fix simply means to resolve. So if we think of it as a slang saying, then I simply want it fixed is an ambiguous statement. Is it talking about the broken watch band? Or is it talking about Mr. Severs' medical problem? So we should rewrite this. I simply wa want the watch fixed. Would clarify this sentence. OK, you might have noticed that uh, the technical setup today is a bit different. I finally thought of a way to free up both of my hands without hiring a teaching assistant to stand next to me to hold the microphone. Um, so if you have any problems hearing or understanding what I'm talking about due to this setup, please let me know. OK, if you have problems hearing or understanding me due to other reasons, please also let me know. OK, uh, the homework I think started from page 19, right? 20 pronoun errors. OK, let's see. Three chaperones. A chaperone is an adult who accompanies children. It comes from the French, so we pronounce this word chaperone. Three chaperones and myself. OK, so that's the first problem. You don't need to say myself unless you're emphasizing that fact. Uh, so it should be three chaperones and I. Left school at 10.03 AM with 45 freshmen, all of whom were excited. OK, so I guess this technically is something we will talk about next semester. But if the word who comes in the object position, especially after a preposition, we use whom instead. We're excited about our visit to Adventureland. The day passed. We don't need the it. Without incident, which means nothing went wrong. Which is a great relief to me. My friend Jim and me. OK, so it should again be and I. Sat in the Adventureland bar and grill for five hours while the youngsters visited space camp. Pirates Mountain and other attractions that are overpriced but popular. Each of the students at my table, Alex and another boy, objected to me eating such good food. OK, this should be my eating such good food. Uh, eating is already a noun. So we have to turn the previous noun into a possessive adjective. 
Um, in everyday usage, me is fine, but if you want to be very picky about it, it should be my, my eating such good food, and said they wanted it too. You cannot count food. The bus driver and I explained that everyone was supposed to eat their school-issued lunch. This well, uh, yeah, this was a disappointment, and the two students. Okay, first of all, him, it should be him, uh, he. Alex and he. Because these are both the subjects of this sentence. The two, se uh, the two students, verb through, object them. So should it be him, it should be he. I think this should be it through it at me. They're talking about the lunch again. Food cannot be counted. We got on one of the vans that. Were. Do uh, overdue for maintenance. Because there's more than one van, so this should be were. If you're only talking about one of these vans. You should use which and this there should be a comma between vans and which, but in this case it says that and there are no commas, so it is plural and we'll we'll talk about this next semester. The motor whirred loudly and it scared. Whoever not whomever. In this case, it is the subject of the sentence. Somebody. Verb heard object the noise, so it's the subject. You should not use who. We drove to Mikoski. I guess Mikoski brake and wheel repairs because the driver said their expertise was what we needed. You don't need to emphasize the ourselves. Mikoski uh, is also the only one of the many repair shops on Route 9 that takes. The subject is one, right? Only one of the many. So it should be singular. Takes credit cards. Which was helpful because I had spent all my money in the Adventureland Bar and Grill. Oh, that's it. Okay. Is this 20? Let's count. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, twelve, fifteen. Wow, we're missing a lot. It says twenty, right? Hmm. Ah, yeah, okay, got this. All of whom we got that. Oh, okay, I missed this one. All of whom were excited about their. Because it's talking about the freshmen, so they were excited about their visit to Adventureland. Okay, found another one. Um, it says each of the students at my table, but there are only two students, so this should be both of the students. OK, and then another one. Both of these are boys. I think Alex is a boy, so each is singular. They're both boys. So we know that this should be he. Uh, if you don't know the gender, then you can say they, but you have to remember that this should be singular. So if you do know the gender, you should use the singular appropriate gender pronoun.
So for example here, everyone supposedly includes both boys and girls. So even though everyone is singular, using there here is fine. I'm wondering if this shouldn't be theirs through their lunch at me. OK, if we're really being picky, this one should be it's is talking about a shop. So uh, like in everyday English, we can say they, but technically it should be it's. OK, how many do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, We're still missing two. OK, once again, I will go home and double check the answers and I will report back to you next week on the two we did not find. Uh, but regarding the 18 that we did find, do you have any questions? OK, next page. We're moving into demonstratives. Hello, my name is Juliet Smith and I am a history teacher. I live in this small town. Town is singular. You should use the singular this. The name of it is Forestville. I like living in this place because I have my family here. So this is a hint. The sentence ends with here. We're talking about something that is close. So you should use this, not that. Next one is those because it's plural, more than one house. Those houses that you can see are of my parents, but I live with my husband and children in the first house. What I like of my house is that big tree. Again, one tree, so use singular that. Next to my house and all plural, those flowers around my house. And there's a picture next to the text to help you understand what's going on. Next one, this is my family. In English, in American English, family is always singular. And the sentence says is, right? This is also singular. So this is my family. My husband's name is Richard and he is a pilot. He likes that profession one profession, so you can't choose these. You have to choose that. And I like it too. Those boys, plural, that you see in the picture are my sons. One is Alex and the other is Sam. Finally, we have Anne. She is seven years old and likes playing in the garden. Anne likes, singular, this picture because we look very happy and she always says, plural, these are my brothers, singular this is my dad, and singular this is my mom. Again, singular this is my class, and those are my students. That book in my hand is the history workbook, and those Notebooks on my desk are the homework of my students. I love this profession. This is the topic that she's currently talking about. 
So it's a you have to choose the closer one. This we are currently talking about it. I love this profession because I like history and I like teaching. Well, that is all or in fact, the better way to say it is that's all. Questions? All right, next page. You have only four options. This, that, these, or those. Allow you to, uh, sorry, allow me to introduce you to my beloved pets. This is my loyal dog. Uh, so you choose the closer one when you're introducing someone or something. You're actually presenting, in this case, the dog to the reader. So it's very close. This is my loyal dog whom I affectionately call Buddy. That cat over there, it says over there, so it's far away. Lounging on the windowsill, the windowsill is the platform outside the window, Chuang Tai, is named Whiskers. These two adorable creatures. This is the current topic, both of these pets. So you should choose the closer one. These two. Adorable creatures have been my constant companions for many years. That is my hamster. So we're currently talking about the cat and the dog. So if we suddenly shift to another animal, the hamster, Huang Jing Shu, that is farther away. So we say that. That is my hamster nestled snugly in its cage. And that bird perched on the stand is my pride and joy. These pets, we're still talking about the same topic. These pets bring immense happiness and companionship to my life. They are like family to me. Notice that family here is uncountable. It's an abstract idea of family. They are like family to me, and I cherish each and every one of them. I take great care of them, ensuring they have a comfortable home, nutritious meals, and lots of playtime. Again, these pets have become an integral part of my daily routine, bringing me endless love, joy, and laughter. Questions? OK, so that is last week's homework. This week we're talking about three things. Numbers, adjectives and adverbs. So let's start with numbers. I'm sure you know the numbers. Maybe not all the numbers because there are an infinite number of them, but I'm sure you know most of them. Um, the problem starts to come up when the numbers get big. So, you know, three, you know, 33, but what about? Is this 333 or 333? Well, the thing is, most teachers will tell you that the correct version is without the and. It's 333. But in daily life, you will mostly hear people say 333. So the answer is whichever one you like. Then you start to get more complicated. Speaking of complicated, I suddenly remembered I forgot to pass out the attendance sheet. OK, once you get into the thousands. Uh, in American English, we always put in this comma to rem to help people. Uh, count how many places there are in the number. So this is three thousand three hundred thirty three or 3,333. 
By the way, in Europe, they use a period. Uh, but in British English, they still use a comma. So if you ever text with a European and you get to using numbers, uh, don't be confused when they suddenly put a period into the number. They're talking about thousands. And then, of course, after 10,000, English and Chinese become quite different. Usually, uh, I suggest remembering a few key numbers to help you convert between the English and Chinese number systems. That way, you don't have to count every time. So it's useful to remember that million equals uh, 101 by one. And billion equals uh, the E. And then trillion equals so. So if you remember these three numbers, then you can convert up and down whenever you have to. By the way, English also has a word for 10,000. It's called the myriad. It comes from Greek. Nobody uses it anymore. Today, the word myriad just means many. Uh, you might hear somebody say uh, myriads of, which just means many. OK, so those are the whole numbers. Then we have the fractions, things that are not uh, one entire number. Um, let's start with decimals. So. In English, we would read this as 3.333. If you have one of these, right? Uh, in Chinese, we say huan. In English, we call this recurring. 3.3 recurring. Um, if your decimal begins with a zero, you can call this 0 0.3 or 0 0.3. If you have a fraction, as it says on the handout, so let's go to the handout. Well, uh, the handout is, I can make this bigger, hang on. Right, so, uh, Four over five is four fifths. There's an S at the end. Two over three is two thirds. One over eight is one eighth singular. If you have a whole number in combination, this one is one and two thirds. In this case, the and is required. You have to have this and. If you don't have this and and you just say one two thirds, that just means two thirds. If you say two two thirds, that means four thirds. So you have to have the and. And then if your fraction is divisible by two, they have a special name. Divided by two is half, divided by four is quarter, um, etc. All of these numbers are plural. Every single number we just mentioned is plural. The only singular number is one. Anything more than one, anything less than one is plural. Zero is plural. Um, but if you do use a fraction, that is also singular. So if you use a decimal point, it's plural, but if you use a fraction, uh, in Chinese we call this fen shu, it's singular. Uh, next, we have many different words for zero. 
nil, nothing, not, o. Oh, we mentioned o earlier. If you're playing tennis, you would use love to mean zero. Uh, telephone numbers. Uh, you read them out loud, don't combine them, right? But if you have two in a row, you might say double two or triple two. So we should, okay, we should talk about this. If you have a number of them in a row, right? So uh, single is one. That's not how you spell that. Single, double, triple, quintuple. No, 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 quadruple. Quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, septuple. Oc I guess it's octuple, non uple, and then uh, dectuple. But I don't think you're going to need that many. The point is the prefix. You should know that tri means three, quad means four, quin means five, sex means six, sept means seven, oct means eight, non means nine, and dec means ten. You can even see this in the English names for months, right? So we have, um, okay, so like January is named after the Roman god Janus, who is the god of openings and closings, beginnings and endings, which is it makes sense, right? It's the beginning of a new year. Um, let's see. July is named for Julius Caesar when he took power and uh, reformed the Roman calendar. He added a new month and named it after himself. August is named after the guy who came after Caesar, Augustus Caesar. Augustus is the first leader of Rome to declare himself emperor. Julius Caesar did not declare himself emperor. He just took control. Um, so Augustus also added a month and named it after himself. And these two months are why September which begins with sept, which means seven, is the ninth month because these two meddling emperors. So September, it means the seventh month, but it's actually the ninth month. And then you have October. Octo means eight, but it's actually the tenth month. November, nov means nine, but it's actually the eleventh month. And then December, dec means ten, but it's actually the twelfth month. So that's a bit of fun trivia for you. Um, OK, and then speaking of these, if you have um, twins, right? Two babies from the same uh, egg. If you have three babies, these are called triplets. If you have four babies, these are called quadruplets and so on. OK. If you need to talk about kings and queens, not sure why you would have to, but if you need to talk about kings and queens, these numbers are cardinal numbers. Uh, which one? So not Henry VIII, Henry the Eighth. Um, so if you have to put numbers in order, these are called cardinal numbers. I'm sure you know these, right? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. Um, the one that is hardest to pronounce is six. Because you really have to get all of those. Sounds in right, you, you have the K, you have the S and you have the TH. All of these are part of the word six. Um, 
Oh, uh, you will learn these symbols next year in linguistics class. Meaning you're in Shui Shui Zhi Fu. Uh, this one, you should know this, right? In American English, the floor on the ground is called the first floor. But in British English, the floor on the ground is called the ground floor. And what we call the second floor, the British call the first floor. So if you talk to a British person or an Australian person, uh, don't be confused. A is the same as one. Numbers do not uh, have numbers as adjectives do not have plurals. Numbers as nouns uh, can have plurals. Right, so here 500 is an adjective describing how many. But here uh, hundreds is used as a noun. Why, why does this talk about British money? Uh, OK, yeah, these do not apply to American money. American money is just dollars and cents. We also call uh, one cent one penny. But the British have this weird word called pence, which means multiple of penny. In English, we just say pennies. Um, the way that we talk about money is the same. We would just say three dollars seventy five or three dollars and seventy five cents. If your adjective includes a number and it's describing a regular noun, you have to use a hyphen to combine to combine these. The most common example is age, a three month old baby or like. A five year old boy. Just means this boy is five years old. So you can see that here it is one word. It comes between the A and the boy. But here you are actually describing the boy on the left of is. So it's three words. The difference is where you put this information in the sentence. When you talk about time, sometimes you need to use the possessive. A week's holiday just means a week of holiday. Four days journey just means a journey of four days. And then finally, uh, if you start a sentence with a null subject, it should be there plus either singular or plural depending on how many. In Chinese, we say yo, right? There are only seven of us here today is Right, like yo. So don't say have, say there. There are, there were, there is. I think that's it. OK, questions? Uh, oh, there's more, sorry. So how do you pronounce these mathematical expressions? The first one is called addition, and the verb is plus. Sometimes you will say and. Two plus two, two and two. The second one is called subtraction, and the verb is minus, or sometimes you will hear from. Four from seven. Notice the order is different. Seven minus four, but four from seven. The third one is called multiplication. To multiply means to make many. Uh, and the verb is called times, three times four. Basically, the idea is you count the number four and you count it three times. So three times four. And the fourth one is called division. And we say nine divided by three. You can also use the active voice. You can say three divides nine, but that is 
quite rare. Usually we use the passive voice. 9 divided by 3. And for all of them, the equal sign, you can say equals or you can say is. All right, 7 minus 4 equals 3 or 7 minus 4 is 3. Both are fine. Dates. OK, so the American date order is. Month. A year. Apparently in Taiwan, the order is year, month, day. Right, we say. We say. Uh, Right, so in Taiwan, it's year, month, day. In Europe, it is day, month, year. And there's no comma. If I remember correctly, Europe here includes the UK. So English people also use day, month, year. Um, there are many different ways to say this. March 30, March 30th. Uh, and then the year is always divided into two halves. 1993. The exception is if your year ha is in a multiple of 100. So like 2000, 2001, 2009 but 2010, 1899, but 1900, and then 1901. If you're reading years, the zero is always O, 1901. OK, I guess this is a bit older. If your years come before the year one. Today, the accepted way to say this is. BCE. So in the past, we said BC and that stood for before Christ, because apparently Jesus Christ, the year that he was born is the first year of the Western calendar because the calendar was decided by the Catholic Church. Um, but today, not we recognize that not everyone is a Christian, so we have changed this to BCE, which means before common era. Uh, in Chinese, there has also been a change. In the past, we said Xi Ren, Western calendar. Today, we say Gong Ren, common calendar. And so after year one, if you have to specify that it is after year one, in the past, we said AD 1901. You put the AD first. AD is Latin, Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord. And so this is again a Christian idea. The Christian Lord is Jesus Christ. So it's saying in the time when Jesus has been born and can save your soul. But again, because now not everyone is Christian, so we have changed it to 1901 CE. And just like BCE, you put it after the number. Again, CE stands for Common Era. Other things. Exponents. This is starting to turn into a math class. Um, exponents or also called powers. So this is four squared or four to the power of two. If you have three, it's cubed. A cube is a 3D square. Li Fang. If you're talking about measurements, you instead of saying times, you would say by. 
So this is 10 by 12 meters. You don't even have to say the first meter. 10 by 12 meters. Um, this is the American spelling of meters. This is the British spelling of meters. This is 60%. Percent in American English is one word. In British English, it is two words. If you're talking about speed, uh, usually we use kilometers per hour, right? This is kilometers per hour. Now, this word in English is pronounced kilometers. If you hear somebody say kilometers, that person is European and they are not a native speaker of English. But for other measurements, this is pronounced kilograms. Uh, and then if you're measuring energy, it is pronounced kilowatt. The only exception is this one, kilometers. Um, sometimes you will have to, or sometimes you will see the American system. Instead of kilograms, they use pounds. And the abbreviation for pounds is LB. One pound is one LB. This comes from Latin. I can't remember what the original word is. OK, so like in the rest of the world, we use the metric system. Uh, using things like kilo and deci, like the multiples of 10. Uh, so we use like um, kilometers, kilograms, grams, etc. In the US and the UK, they use what's called the imperial system. It's called imperial because it was invented and spread throughout the world by the British Empire. And instead of kilometers, they use miles and yards and feet and inches. Instead of kilograms, they use pounds and ounces. And the abbreviation for ounce is OZ. Don't ask me why. Uh, pounds is LB. Um, let's see if I remember this. There are 12 ounces in every pound. There are 12 inches in every foot. There are three feet to every yard. And there's a very complicated number of yards to every mile. Actually, I want to I want to look this up. How many yards in a mile? There's no way anybody will remember this. There's 1,760 yards in each mile. Or like how many feet in a mile? 5,280 feet, and there's no way anybody remembers this. And that's why the rest of the world uses the metric system. In terms of volume, uh, the metric system uses cubic meters, right? Oh, I should put this in metric. The metric system uses cubic meters, but the imperial system uses gallons, quarts, pints, cups, tablespoons, and teaspoons. And that's why if you read a recipe, you will often see these words. Um, I don't remember um, how many teaspoons in a tablespoon, but I do remember the abbreviation is TSP. Tablespoon is TBSP. Uh, there are, I think, eight cups in every. No, no, no. I can't remember how many cups are in each pint, but there are eight pints in every quart and there are four quarts in every gallon. Now, the problem with this complicated situation 
is that you do have to know the which one is bigger and which one is smaller, because if you go to buy milk. Milk is still measured using the imperial system. So like the big jug of milk is usually in gallons. The tall box of milk is a quart. The small box of milk is a pint. Uh, and then if you go to like a, a British bar, right, and you order beer, they also count beer in pints. OK, and then you have temperature. We use the Celsius system. Some people call it centigrade. Which is the same thing. It just means out of 100. Celsius is the name of the person who invented it. Centigrade means the number. Out of 100. And we say we how do we say this? We say 28 degrees Celsius. Or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you ever need to convert between the two. Uh, it's Celsius. Hang on, what is it? Celsius times. 9 divided by 5 plus 32 equals Fahrenheit. Um, 32 is the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit. So like if you need a very quick conversion, uh, one degree, uh, sorry, zero degrees Celsius is 32 degree Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Celsius is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then we have uh, a dozen, which means 12. If you have 13, you can call that a baker's dozen because bakers will often, well, in the past, traditionally, bakers would add an extra loaf of bread if you buy 12. I think that's finally it. OK, let's take a break, and when we come back, we will talk about adjectives and adverbs.
OK, next up, adjectives. Adjectives are words that describe nouns. Most adjectives come in front of the noun, but there are some that come after the noun. And adjectives that come after the noun are usually equivalent to an abbreviated relative clause. So for example, in this case, the word involved is an adjective. It's describing the people. You can also say the people who are involved. Another one. Present meaning here, the people who are here, the people who are present. Another one, most of these have to do with people. Concerned. Something concerns somebody, it means that these people have to do with whatever this thing is. Uh, and then one more is, well, not one more, I should say, uh, one more case is anything that describes an indefinite pronoun. So, like, uh, you know, something, anything, these kinds of things. If you're describing one of these pronouns, the adjective comes after the pronoun. One more thing to know about English pronouns is that they have a specific order. And I do apologize for this because I don't have to remember this. As a native speaker, I naturally know the correct order of adjectives. But if you don't yet have that language sense, you do have to remember this. Um, so there are eight kinds of adjectives. Or I guess articles don't count, right? Well, they do count. If you say like my, my or your, this counts uh, as an article or determiner. Then you have quality, size, weight, age, that kind of thing. Color, nationality, gender, permanent quality, something that cannot be changed, substance, and then finally you have the noun. So for example, my is the determiner. First is subjective, so it's a perceived quality. It just means a subjective quality. Big is the size here. Green is the color. Rubber is the substance, what it's made out of. And then finally, the noun. Or the first one. Un is the article. Attractive is the subjective quality. Ancient is the age. British is the nationality. If you wanted to specify it's for women, you can say British women's, and that would include the gender. Copper is the substance, and then you have the noun. The basic logic here is that the closer to the noun the adjective is, the more it is related directly to the noun. So like copper, the necklace is made of copper. There's no other way to make this specific necklace. But it could be that the necklace no longer belongs to a British person. Maybe it now belongs to a Kenyan person or to an Argentinian. So that is more changeable. And then finally, the subjective description depends on who is looking at the necklace or who is talking about the necklace. So that is the least related to the necklace itself. So here are some other examples. His 
determiner. Five, you can see that there are five of them. Old age, American nationality, cousins, noun. A magnificent subjective, old age, American nationality, Ford, this is its permanent quality. Automobile means car. So here you're talking about a car that was made by Ford. You cannot talk about this specific car without uh, describing it as being made by Ford. You can't say that it's made by Ferrari. So it's a permanent quality. A memorable, very subjective, French nationality, skiing trip. The trip is a the kind of trip is a skiing trip. You cannot talk about this trip as another kind of trip. It's a permanent quality. Now, sometimes you will use more than one adjective of the same kind. So dangerous and useless. Both of these are subjective qualities. I think it's dangerous. I think it's useless. Maybe you disagree. So in this case, you would use and to connect these two. Right? Notice that adjectives of different categories do not have to be connected by and. Only adjectives of the same category must be connected by and. And then it is a chemical experiment. This is the kind of experiment. Nice subjective. Fresh is the age. It's new. Red color, Spanish nationality, tomato noun. Now, sometimes instead of the and, you can simply use a comma. In this case, this comma is telling us that dangerous and useless are of the same type of adjective. So if you ever need to write something using multiple adjectives, you can look at this table. This is on page 131 of our textbook. And to a native speaker, if you spit out these adjectives in any other order, they sound very weird. If you tell me you have you, you went on a French memorable skiing trip, that sounds very weird. If you say you have a rubber green big ball, again, that sounds very weird. It has to be a big green rubber ball. OK, so those are the adjectives. Questions? OK, one last thing to talk about. Adverbs. Adverbs are words that describe. Other substantive words that are not nouns, so adverbs can describe adjectives, verbs. Other adverbs. Or a whole sentence. Um, OK, adverbs. Let's see, let's let's take these in turn. So an, an adverb that describes an adjective. Green is an adjective, very is therefore an adverb. Uh, one that describes a noun, oh, sorry, a verb. Ran is the verb, quickly is the adverb. And then something that describes an adverb. <laughs> OK. The adjective is good. The, the second very describes the adjective and the first very describes the second very, which is an adverb. And then an adverb that can describe a whole sentence. Fortunately, she got away. In this case, the fortunately is describing this entire situation. This entire situation is fortunate. 
most adverbs should come either before or after what they describe. But some adverbs come after, they must come after. So this is on the textbook, page 134. These, um, sorry, uh, here we're talking about adverbs that look exactly the same as their adjectives. So if you say a fast train, fast is an adjective. If you say it went very fast, the fast is modifying the went. So the fast here is an adverb. Hard day works hard, also an adverb. Working late, I long thought. Long here means for a long time. Daily is both adjective and adverb, but the word friendly is only an adjective. Friendly does not have an adverb. Wrong, next, these are all adverbs that look like they're adjectives. And then you also have adverbial phrases. There are many, many, many adverb phrases and the, the textbook only gives us two of the most common. For long means for a long time. For short means as abbreviation. So he's called Archibald, but we call him Archie for short. Jian Chen. Uh, and then you have uh, less than expected. We were seven short means we had seven fewer than expected. I don't know why it says less. It should be fewer, fewer than expected. So this is connected to the phrase to come up short, which means to not have enough. So most adverbs should be either right in front or right behind whatever they are describing. But you can put sentence ad adverbs anywhere. So to demonstrate this, let me give you a longer sentence. You can put the hopefully in the very front. Um, you can put it in the middle of the verb cluster. You can put it. Um, after the object. You can even put it at the very end of the sentence. Because it describes the whole sentence, you can basically put this adverb anywhere. And if you put it in a place that is not expected, you can still put it there, but you have to surround it with commas to let the reader know that it is not in one of the more common locations. So, I think I forgot one. You can also put it after the subject. We hopefully can finish, etc. We can finish. Hopefully the homework, etc. So this is not one of the common locations, so you have to add these two commas. To help your reader understand what's going on in this sentence. Adverbs are various. There are many, many, many different ways to use adverbs. Personally, I think when grammarians don't know what a word is, they simply call it an adverb. So the point is not recognizing what is or is not an adverb. The point is to be able to use it correctly. OK, do you have questions about adverbs? All right, let's do the practice. Let's start with numbers. 
uh, on page 23 on the right hand side, I want you to write out how to say these numbers. Actually, I think we can do this faster. With your help, we can do this faster. OK, so let's see. How would you say the first one, Huangju? Saima? No, Ma Su. Saima, how would you say the first one? Good. How would you say the next one, Ling Meng Ru? Saima? Hi, how would you say this one? Good, 2.3 pounds. Good. Uh, next one, Yan Yiting. Are you here? Yan Yiting. Uh, yeah, how would you say this one? Okay, very close. 0 0.258. Uh, okay, next one. This is a telephone number. I'll give you a hint. Three, 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 and then four. Lin Xuan Yu, are you here? Lin Xuan Yu, is there? Liu De Yi. Okay, how would you read this telephone number? Good. Three zero seven six five four nine eight eight zero, or you can uh, say o oh, three o oh, seven six five four nine eight eight o, oh. or you can even say nine double eight o. Oh, but I think that's more confusing. Okay, the mathematical equation. How would you say this? Hong Wenxing. Hong Wenxing, right? Uh, Zhang Ziyan. Thank you. How would you say this uh, equation? Good. Five plus seven equals twelve. The next one is a tennis score. Wang Chiu Fen Shu. I'll give you this one. I'll tell you this one. This one is. To love. Love means zero. To love. The next one, how would you say this one? Uh, Chu Wanding. Chu Wanding, you like Okay. Zhang Borong. Zhang Borong. Um, Xu Zhenming. No. Wang Yuzhen. Hi, how would you say this number? Seven eighths. This one. Uh, seven eighths. Good, OK. Uh, how would you say this next number, Yang Ziliang? How would you say this number? One third, right? OK, good. Uh, this is British. We don't have to say this. This is 50 pence. Next one. 
黄龙仪，星，对不起，黄龙星 ，Of course he is。丁瑞安，丁瑞安，呃，刘永林 ，Hi， how would you say this number？ 好，非常接近，四百万七千六百七十七，或你不可以说最后，四百万七千六百七十七，这两者都可以。下一个，陈一杰，陈一杰，对。所以，怎么你说这个人的名字？陈我给你两个选择，是詹姆斯一，还是詹姆斯二？詹姆斯一，好。在中文我们也说詹姆斯一世。下一个，怎么你说这个数字？蒲生宇。Yes, sixty-five miles per hour. Good. Uh, or in Taiwan, we would say kmph, kilometers per hour. Next one. Uh, Wu Yisan. Wu Yisan, there. Uh, Huang Huiyu. Huang Huiyu. Zhang Tingwei. 张庭伟，我是不是应该重新点名一遍了、啊？周晨阳，没关系。OK， 那那 six squared good。呃 ，OK，I'm gonna skip this one. This one should be fifteen hundred CE, not AD CE. 呃、uh, ，next one. How do you say this? 黄淑惠。黄淑惠，在吗 ？No， 王之韵。OK， 曹真，吴敏玲。Yes， how would you say this？ 18 divided by 6 equals 3 or is 3. Uh, we, we did this one, right? 15 love. This is 1 euro 85. This is 5 cubed. This is 2 thirds. OK, this one. Li Yiquan. 李一宽在吗？龚巧玲，龚巧玲 ，Good. Nine minus two equals seven. Next one, Meng Tingxuan. Meng Tingxuan. Uh, Rui Fangyu. Yes. How would you say this? Good, 2.8906 or 2.8906, both are fine. Um, oh, this one is fun, let's do this one. Let's see. Lin Yuzhen, Lin Yuzhen is there? Zhang Ziqian, Zhang Ziqian, Li Xianghua, Li Xianghua, um, 
，徐礼维，徐礼维在吗？翁敬恩，翁敬恩，何宽宏。There we go. Okay, how do you say this number? Good. Five hundred and sixty-seven million one hundred and twenty uh, thousand two hundred and thirty-eight. Or without the ands, five hundred seventy six sixty seven million one hundred twenty thousand two hundred thirty eight. Okay, good. You have survived this round. Okay, page twenty four. Sir, can you say that again? Say it again. Okay. Okay. 有公价的话是系统的事。Okay. Okay. Page twenty-four. Choose the correct one. There are eight questions. I will give you three minutes. Okay, let's compare answers. Number one, a table in a kitchen is a kitchen table. A. Number two, the two tables in my bedroom are my bedroom tables. C. 
Number three, I have an office at home. It is my home office. B. Number four, a lot of people have offices in their homes. They have home offices. A. Number five, there are two phone lines in my house, one for my home and one for my office. One is my home phone and the other is my office phone, B. It already tells you the answer, right? Home phone, therefore office phone. Number six, there is a sink in the kitchen and one in each bathroom. We have two bathrooms, so we have one kitchen sink and two bathroom sinks, C. Number seven, in the back of our house, which means behind our house, we grow vegetables in a garden. It's a vegetable garden, A. Eight, we have two trees that grow cherries. They are cherry trees, B. Questions? OK, next page, page 25. Same thing, but now you have to write it down. There are. 11 questions. And because you have to write it down, I'll give you a little more time. I'll give you four minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. For two, there was a party to celebrate Lynn's birthday. There was a birthday party. For Lynn. Number three, the retirees, Tui Shou Ren, Ren, receive checks, zi piao, from the government every month. They receive a government check every month. Number four, the seats in the airplane are very small. The airplane seats are very small. Number five, the pajamas, shui yi, are made of cotton, mian. They are cotton pajamas. Number six, there were no rooms in the local hotels that were available. There were no available hotel rooms. Number seven, their baby is 10 months old. They have a 10 month. It's not how you spell it. Month old baby. Notice the hyphens. Lian Jie Hao. Number eight, our trip lasted for three days. We took a three hyphen day trip. Number nine, their apartment has three rooms. It is a three room apartment. Number 10, the professor asked us to write a paper of five pages. She asked us to write a five page paper. A paper, by the way, is a student research paper. Shrezen Luwen. Number 11, Luigi is a singer. He sings in operas, Geju. He is a famous opera singer. Number 12, a convention for people who collect stamps is being held at city center. A convention is a large gathering of people. My uncle is a collector. He has been a stamp collector since he was a boy. Or as we mentioned last week, a philatelist. Somebody who is a stamp collector. OK, questions? All right. Um, let's stop here. Next week we are going to talk about prepositions. For homework, please do pages 26 to 31. 26 to 31. Some of these questions are review questions about nouns and verbs. Uh, also. OK, that's it. See you next week.